I just want to add quickly here. What it shows is that the president-elect is willing to nominate individuals who can get bipartisan support. And I think that's what you want. There were some sort of blue-collar Democrats or blue-dog Democrats who did vote for the president-elect, haven't voted for a Republican in quite some time. So to see that of the three names, Democrats are coming out saying, oh, wait a minute here, these are some good people. I would potentially vote for them. I think that's a, a kudos to the president-elect and his willingness to put forth individuals who can sort of bring Congress together. That's a good thing. Let me say a word about Hunter Biden. A lot has been said and written about the pardon. President Biden is letting his son off the hook for the federal crimes that he committed. Uh, this weekend, of course, he pardoned Hunter. And it, it's important to point out, and everyone has, and even many Democrats are now expressing their great disappointment and their dismay, because the president promised us over and over and over, repeatedly, unequivocally, he told the American people that he would not issue a pardon for his son, and then he did it. It was more than 10 occasions. We have the receipts. It's all on video. They made formal, official declarations to that point. The White House said he wouldn't do it, but he did. So they misled the American people. And a lot has been uh, recounted over the last couple of days since that happened that it's just like when he said the border was secure. It's just like when he said that Bidenomics was working great for the American people. It's just like when he denied or tried to cover up his <clears throat> obvious mental uh, acuity and decline. And it's just like when he insisted that the catastrophic Afghanistan withdrawal was somehow a success. Th this pardon is a perversion of justice and it is a utter disregard for the rule of law and it undermines, further undermines, the people's faith in our system of justice. So we have reform on the way, and it cannot happen soon enough. And we, you've heard us say many times, you've heard me say many times as a former constitutional law attorney litigator that I, I, this is one of the greatest concerns I have when the people believe that there are two tiers of justice. And the, the current occupant of the White House emphasizes that point. It makes it very difficult. They have done, in my view, the, the Biden family, almost irreparable damage to our system of justice. So we have a lot to repair. You and all these Democratic mayors out here and governors, y'all talking about crashing out for these illegals, right? You all sit up there and say it. You will not allow Trump to come in here and get these illegals. Yeah, you can smile. We're in a billion dollar deficit and you spent Half of our money, half of that, on illegals. Trump, Tom Holman, make an example at this right here first. Please come here first. Because you know what? We're going to help you. We want to forensic Ma'am, I would ask that you, we you keep forensic your, hold on a second, stop her time. Our mayor is embarrassing us, y'all, around the world. And you all took the power back from him to say the city of Chicago is out of the business of funding illegals. We are out of the business of prioritizing non-American citizens on top of the American citizens who go out in this cold weather every day to make money to pay their taxes. You so strong about protecting those aliens, but you won't do nothing for the U.S. citizens. Here you are with another gritty property tax hike, trying to push the have lots to house your precious illegal immigrants. You told Trump you ain't gonna blink? Well, we ain't either. You ain't above the law, and where you gonna run to when Trump pours that Trump card out on you? I will make it my duty to try to get my gun to perform my Operation Great Lord 2.0 in Chicago and lock all of you crooked Democrats and judges up. And it's just like that.